thousands who did not have bread I saw him bring people back from the dead He drove out demons from the demon bound And taught us how to walk on holy ground He made the leper skin like new The storm dissipated when he told it to Took jars of water, turned it into wine To save even heal this heart of mine We have seen His glory We have seen His glory Paul has several words to us today from 1 Corinthians chapter number 7 and verse number 7. Listen to what Paul has to say, but, but I wish everyone were single, just as I am. Yet each person has his own special gift from God of one kind or another. And then Paul transitioned in verse number 10, he says these words, And unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. And then God has some words to say to his people in Malachi chapter number 2 and Verse number 16, God says, For I hate divorce, said the Lord, the God of Israel. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty, says the Lord. And then finally, look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 5 and verse number 3. In this cocktail of scriptures, the Bible said these words, honor widows that are widows indeed. Let's do it again. Let's continue talking about married, or rather single, married, divorce. And widowed. Let me say it again. Single, married, divorced, and widowed. This is the second in a series of messages on the subject. We are journeying through the Bible and we are looking what God has to say to all of us in reference to our marital status. Every one of us are either single, we are married, we are divorced, or we are widowed. And God has something to say to all of us today, no matter what our marital status is. Let me remind you that uh, there is a certain pressure put on single individuals today. There is Pressure on every side for single people to get married. Their friends and relatives are pressuring them to, to get married. They have been dating for a while and, and everybody wants to know, when are you getting married? And parents are pressuring uh, their children, their single children who are marriage age to, to get married. When are you getting married? I, I want some grandchildren and they are pressuring their, 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 their adult children to get married. Oh, there's pressure from every side. And even, and even in the church, there are members of the church who are pressuring those singles who are together to get married. And oh, there is that biological clock that is ticking so loud in the ears of young ladies today. And, and they want to get married because the biological clock is ticking and, and they want to get married. The pressure is on. Then... 
they yield to the pressure. Just because the pressure is on, there are some who unconsciously get married and, and they live unhappily ever after just because of the pressure. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, I, I want you to know, all of you who are single, God never puts pressure on anyone to marry. I want to say it again. I want to say it again and again. God never puts pressure on no one to marry. For marriage is a serious endeavor. God will not pressure you to get married. Oh, yes, my brothers and sisters. Don't you, don't you allow no one to pressure you to get married. I want to say this, Jesus says, we talked about this in Matthew chapter 19. Jesus says in so many words, marriage is not for everybody. Marriage is not for everyone. There are some folks that should not get married, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 19. Jesus said there are eunuchs. There are, there are individuals who do not have a, a sexual desire. And, and, and marriage is not for them, Jesus said. Marriage is not for everyone. There are some folk that should never get married. Jesus said there were eunuchs. And they were made eunuchs for the kingdom of God's sake. I want to say emphatically today that that, that, that the merit of the single life can be a good life. The, the single life can be a, a wonderful life. Oh, marriage is not for everyone. You, you can enjoy life and you can have a wonderful life being single. And Jesus said there were some people who were made eunuchs and there were some individuals who were single for the kingdom of God's sake. I want to encourage those who are single. Dedicate your time to the Lord. Dedicate your time to the church. Oh, thank God. Thanks be to God for those singles who are working in the church, who are dedicating their time to the church. Thanks be to God. You are blessed. Thank you. Dedicating your time to the church. But I, I can hear, I can hear some single individuals saying, I, I can hear them saying, I, I, I'm tired of being alone. I, I'm tired of going to bed by myself. I, I'm tired of, of being single. And, and the biological clock is ticking and, and they want to get married. Oh, I want you to hear my brothers and sisters. I, I, I want you to hear uh, 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 Christian singers, I, I want you to hear a warning from the Lord. Do you have your ears on today? Do you have your ears on today? If you are planning on getting married, you are single and you want to get married, you are, you are tired of being alone, then God has a message for you. If you are a Christian single, God, God has a message for you today. Is found in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 14. God said these words, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Do you hear, do you hear, do you hear the will of God? Do you hear the warning to every single Christian today? God said, if you really want to get married, if, you really, if you're tired of being alone, then don't you yoke yourself together with unbelievers. Don't you, don't you marry someone whom you are not spiritually compatible to. Don't you yoke yourself to someone that is not spiritually compatible to you. You're asking for trouble. You're asking for trouble. I want you to see the analogy now. The analogy is uh, yoking, the yoking process was yoking two unlike animals together to work together. 
don't, don't, don't the image is and the analogy is, don't you yoke, don't you yoke two different animals together. And God told Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 22, don't plow uh, 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 an ox and a donkey together. In other words, they can't work together. They're two different animals. They, they are two different individuals and, and they can't work together. And what God, what God, what God is saying to the Christian single, don't you yoke yourself to someone that you can't work with and someone that is not harmonious with you. You're asking for trouble. You're asking for trouble. You're asking for trouble. Yes, God. Says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I want to tell you this. Are you listening? I everyone in the church and everyone that comes to church is not a true believer. I, I want to say it again. E everyone, everyone, everyone that, that comes to church is not a true believer. And everyone that, that is baptized is not a true believer. You better be careful. Even in the church, you better be careful. And the Bible says again, don't yoke yourself to someone who's an unbeliever. Oh, don't allow your passions. Don't allow your feelings to overrule your, your, your spiritual uh, cognizance. Don't, don't allow your, your, your feelings and don't allow your passions to join someone or marry someone to whom you are not compatible to. I hear you. I, your hormones are, are talking. Your, your passions are, are screaming. But, but don't you allow your passions and your hormones to cause you to yoke up your, yourself with someone whom you are not spiritually compatible to. Yes. Yes, today. We must understand what God is saying to us today. I want to say, my brothers and sisters, oh, what a tragedy it is. And oh, throughout the Bible, there are tragic situations when, when believers marry non-believers. And God told Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 7, God says, I don't want you marrying the heathens. I, I don't want you to marry those who are unbelievers. I, I don't want you to marry them. Why, Lord? Why? God said, because they will draw your heart away from God. You ought to read it. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Oh, what a tragedy it was. A tragedy it was when Solomon married many strange wives, the Bible says, in 1 Kings chapter 11. The Bible said that Solomon married many strange wives, or many unbelieving wives, and the Bible said they drew his heart away from God. Oh, what a tragedy it was. The wisest man that ever lived. The king of Israel, the man of God, allowed himself to be yoked together with unbelievers. And they drew his heart away from God. It was a tragic situation. It was a sad story. Oh, yes. Ah. Uh, and there is another message to single Christians. And the message comes loud and clear from 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse number 9. The, 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 the Bible says this. It, it is better to marry than to burn. Oh, it's better to marry than to burn with passion. That, that's a word from the Lord to every Christian single. It's better to marry than to burn. And then the Bible says these words, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. To avoid fornication. Sex is for marriage only. 
Sex is for marriage only. Sex is for marriage only. Can you hear me today? Sex is for marriage only. Sex is not for singles. Sex is not for kids. It's for married folk only, God says. Yes. Now we're ready to change the channel. Would you change the dial? Would you change the dial today? We're, we're changing the dial from single to married. Dial in, dial in to the marriage channel. We're, we're going to talk about marriage. We're going to transition now to the married life. Oh, married life. Dearly beloved. We're we'll gathered here today to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Oh, sir, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? To have and to hold, for better or for worse, for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health, till death do your part. And madam, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? To have and to hold, for better or for worse, for rich or for poor, for in sickness and in death, till death do you part. I therefore pronounce you man and wife, what therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. You now may salute your bride. Oh, what a wonderful life it is. Oh, what a wonderful life it is for a man and a woman to come together in matrimony, in holy matrimony. Oh, what, oh, what a wonderful life it is. You meet someone that loves you as much as you love them. Oh, what a wonderful life it is to meet your, your partner, your, your soulmate. It's like a lock and key. Oh, what a wonderful life it is. Can somebody say amen today? But I want to warn you, you better be careful who you marry. Ha, I said again. Be careful who you marry and be careful when you marry. I, I want to tell you today that the American marriage and the American home is in trouble. The American home is deteriorating. The, the paint is fading. The foundation is crumbling. And oh, the roof is leaking, and yes, the, the weeds are growing up in the American home. The, Ameri the American home is deteriorating today. Oh, it's a deteriorating today. I tell you, I tell you today, there are individuals who are, who are just living together. They're married, but they're just living together. Oh, yes, somebody said it's just cheaper to keep it. Somebody said, somebody said, it's just cheaper to keep her. The American home is in trouble today. Be careful who you marry. Be careful who you marry. Well, the Bible says this. That a good marriage... And a good home begins with God. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Who's building your house? Who's building your marriage? Would you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, would you invite the Lord into your house? Would you invite the Lord into your marriage? Who's building your house? Who, whose blueprint are you using? Oh, you need to invite God to build your house. You need to invite God to build your marriage today. Except the Lord build the house, your marriage can never be all that God wants it to be unless you allow God to build your marriage. And the Bible says this, oh, there is peace when God builds the house. Oh, there is peace. I, I'm in first. Uh, I'm in Psalms 127 in verse number two. The Bible says this for so give he peace 
or so give his beloved sleep. It's talking about the marital relationship. And so he gives his beloved sleep. Peace. Oh, when the Lord build the house. Oh, there's nothing like peace in the house. When the Lord builds the house, there is peace. Oh, there is nothing like peace. You can go to bed and there is peace. There are no nightmares. Some marriages are nightmares. Can somebody say amen? But oh, when the Lord builds the house, there are no nightmares. When the Lord builds the house. Yes. You can have a mansion. If there is no peace, it's miserable. Can somebody say amen? You can live, you can have the big screen TV, but if there is no peace, oh, it's miserable. And you can have the big screen TV, you can have the king size bed and the California bed, but if there is no peace, oh, you're living a miserable life. Oh, the Bible said, if God build the house, there is peace in the house. Let God build your house. Let him build the house. Let's change the channel again. We're talking about divorce now. Change your channel to the divorce channel. Can you change the channel to the divorce channel? Again, I want to remind you. That the American home is deteriorating. Divorce is rampant in America. Yes, again, I want to remind you, I want to remind you that, that the foundation is crumbling. I want, I want to remind you that, that the paint is fading. I want to remind you that the roof is leaking. Really leaking. And I want to remind you that weeds are growing up. In the American house, in the American home. Somebody said, the thrill is gone. And someone said, it's just cheaper to keep her. And there are some individuals who are just friends with benefits. And then the benefits are drying up. I tell you, the American home is in trouble. The American marriage is in trouble. 50% of all marriages end in divorce. I, I want to say it again. 50% of all marriages end in divorce according to a U.S. census of 2009. Not only that, but, oh, if you marry a second time, second marriages, the divorce rate is about 60%. And then if you try it a third time, if you get married a third time, the divorce rate is even higher. 72% of third marriages end in divorce. I tell you, the American marriage and the American home is in trouble. I'll tell you something else that's even worse. If you shack up and then get married, the divorce rate is even higher. I don't even have the statistics on that. I say if you shack up and you live together and then you get married, your divorce rate will go higher. Yes, the American home is deteriorating. But not only that, my brothers and sisters, 71% of all marriages 71% of all couples have had an affair. I want to say it again. I tell you, the American home, the American marriage is in trouble. 71% of all couples have, have had an affair. Oh, yes. I tell you that the American home and the American marriage is in trouble. 80% of all of those who have had an affair, 80% of those who cheat, Get caught. I tell you, the American, I tell you, the American marriage and the American home is in trouble today. They are going through a transition. What's the solution, Brother Graham? Allow God to build your house. I want to say it again. 
Allow God to build your house. Allow God to build your marriage. Invite God to the wedding. Invite God into your house. Invite God to your marriage. Yes. There is a, a, another problem. I, I, I want to tell you this. Israel was going through something just like America is going through. Uh, divorce was at a wholesale price. Everybody was getting a divorce. And God said these words to, to Israel. God said, I hate divorce. God said, I hate divorce. And then God said in so many words, I, 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 I don't bring me your worship because you're living in sin. Don't bring me your, your, your worship because you, 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 you are divorcing your wives for no reason. Everyone was divorcing for no reason at all. And God said, I hate divorce. I hate divorce. Well, let's transition one more time. And the message will be yours today. One more time, change the, down, the dial to the widowed. Statistics says that there are 3.5 male widows in the United States. Statistics says that there are 11.1 million female widows in the United States. Oh, widows. Those who have lost a loved one, those who have lost their spouse. I want to express my condolences to, to all of those who have lost a loved one, who have lost their spouse. I want you to know that God loves widows. I, I, I invite you to read from Genesis to Revelation what God does for widows. In the Bible, the Bible said that God protects widows and God provides for widows. God told Israel, when you harvest your, 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 your fields, leave some for widows. And then the Bible says that, that God will punish those who abuse widows. And then the Bible says in the New Testament, the Bible says the church ought to take care of widows. I tell you, God provides for widows. God loves widows. God, the Bible says this, children, grandchildren ought to take care of their widows. That's what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 5. If you are a grandchild, you are a child. You are to take care of your widows. And the Bible says this to widows. The Bible says you continue to trust in God. If you are a widow, you lost your loved one. You lost your spouse. The Bible says you hold on to God. Uh, you hold, you trust in God. You continue to pray to God. If you are a widow, then we said as we come to a close last week, God said if you have lost your spouse, you are liberty to marry to whomever you will, only in the Lord. If you want to get married again, God said, you are liberty to marry only in the Lord. Marry someone, marry someone who's in the Lord. Marry someone whom you are spiritually compatible to. Marry someone that loves the Lord. As I close today with these words, the Bible says this. Whatever you do, word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. Whatever your, whatever, whatever your marital status is, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're divorced, whether you're widowed, do all in the name of the Lord. You, whatever you do, do all in the name of the Lord. Be faithful to the Lord. If you're single, be faithful. If you're married, be faithful. If you're divorced, be faithful. If you're widowed, be faithful. Do all in the name of the Lord. 